Alright, we're back. We're joined by Abisha and Jessica, sick of Sarah. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you doing, Jay? Oh, we're doing great. You're storming through America. I just hit L.A. on the way to Phoenix. We are yeah. trudging through America. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> I, we'll get ready. It gets hot, as you know, in Arizona. And then yeah. and then Texas gets a little more humid. Yep. And then, you, of course, you guys got to go back to the cold. So. Right. So we're kind of soaking up the sun right now. I'm not looking forward to going back to the cold. I'm okay with it's the It's nice. Weather. Kind of an extended it. summer right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. It is. It is like an extended summer. It's really nice and hot here. And it's what? October 21st? Almost November. Can you know. believe it? I know. It's so now tell us where you guys are based and individually how you got involved in music. Like what age did you start creating rather than just being a fan? And who were some of those musical artists? Ooh. Well, I started music, fifth grade, snare drum, loved it. I first, I started off on the flute. Studying in school? Yeah, like school band. School band. And I, 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 first I picked up the flute, and it was two weeks later, and I was like, Mom, I just came home from school. I was like, Mom, I think I'm a drummer. And she's like, she was totally cool with it. So she let me just, you know, make a bunch of noise at our house. And I grew up in marching band with the, um, the big hats and the pointy black shoes, and I loved it. I loved marching band. And then I took a hiatus for a minute. Went through some obstacles, you know, from about 18 to 20. And um, I moved to Des Moines when I was 20, and I joined my first band, and I learned how to play a full kit. And then I played a show with, uh, with Sika Sarah at Bodville Muse in Des Moines with my old band, and that's how we met, and they stole me from Des Moines. And I grew up listening to a lot of 90s alternative rock. Like, I love Bush, um, Poe, you know, a lot of the grunge, Nirvana. Um, mm -hmm. And I also like some hip-hop as well. I'm not gonna lie. So. Yeah, well, good music comes in all shapes, genres, absolutely, sizes. Absolutely, absolutely. If it moves you, it doesn't matter what they call it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How about you? Uh, I actually just started playing music yesterday. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, congratulations yeah, on your second day. Job, Thank you. Yeah. Um, no, I'm Progressing kidding. well. <laughs> yeah, I'm a prodigy child. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, um, I started playing music when I was 13. My brother bought me a guitar, and um, I started writing right away. Uh, before that, I was just doing choir and church and school, stuff like that. But um, when I moved to Minneapolis when I was 18, I started playing like solo stuff on the guitar. And I was like, I really want to join a band. And I was trying to join some, some bands and was getting rejected quite a few times. And then um, I met these girls and I was like, hey, let's start a band. We ended up doing that. Five months into it, we got... Um, we were scouted by Adamant Records and recorded an EP, five songs, and then from there we just kind of, you know, and then there was an album, and then there was a second one, and now we're on our EP, Anthem, six songs, it's really cool. You gotta buy that on iTunes or Amazon or whatever. Absolutely. We'll get all the so links by the end. Songs. So this would be number release of how many? Uh, this really, would be your... I think it's like five or six EPs. Okay. And started, and this will be... And we have two full lengths. So, so this seventh is, release, in a sense? Yeah, I guess our seventh release, it should be. That oh. sounds yeah. about right. So, seven. What's kind of nice these days is it doesn't have to be a traditional album. You can release an EP of however many songs or release, release a single. A single yeah. you I, know. I really like that, especially now being independent artists. Uh, you know... We literally did a six songs because it was all we could afford to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot but of songs. Six pack is like, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. We so we want a six pack. Six pack. Yeah. Little, 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 little six, six pack. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of doing singles or doing, you know, like a, throughout the year, you know, quarterly doing, you know, three, four, mm -hmm. five, six song EPs. I think that's cool. You know, there's no rules. You yeah, know? no rules. Exactly. Connect with your fans. Like sour. Rules, Jay. No like rules. rules. Oh, we we definitely buck the rules around here. <laughs> 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 we got that indie power. So, <laughs> so. Des Moines home of Slipknot and Slipknot. teaming up with these guys and you're based where now? Uh, We're in Minneapolis. Minneapolis yeah. Okay. Well, again, a storied musical history up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. From the replacements to the Soul revolution. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, lot of, good, a lot of good funk. Sarah. And I heard it's a really good band. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> Prince was telling me all about yeah. you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually heard about Sick of Sarah through Prince. We were okay. Pancakes one morning. It was there you go. But whatever. Mm. 
the Paisley Park. Mm -hmm. Paisley Park. That's where we are. Awesome, yeah. awesome. We do need to record there. I want to record. That would be really Yeah, I just awesome. interviewed Dave Perner from uh, Soul Asylum recently, so oh, I heard really? about all the How's early... How's he doing? He's doing good. Good. Heard about the early days of the Twin Tone records nice. and nice. all yeah, that good uh, stuff. Yeah, the replacements and it was it was a great time in the 80s, you know. We're talking about, of course, the Go-Go's, which we might as well damn turn around and talk about this. Besides the evolution of your music, tell us how this show came about, Breaking Bands, okay. and tell us about your experience. Well, we actually, um, our booking agent, we got an email from our booking agent uh, with just, you know, a few pointers on, a few ideas on what they were looking for in the show and if we would be interested in it. And we were going to be on tour at the time, so it made sense because we had to do the show in, in Los Angeles. So it was on our last uh, tour, and we were like, yeah, we absolutely would love to. And she kind of pitched it that... It'll be um, a show um, where there'll be like a special celebrity guest mentor that we wouldn't find out about until the day of. Surprise. And so it was, and a lot of it was kind of a surprise. Like we really weren't given a lot of details. Um, you know, we knew that it was going to be showed, it was going to be aired on Access TV, and, um, and it just sounded like a really cool experience, something that we wouldn't want to pass up. Like nothing to lose from it, you know what I mean? So we were like, yeah, we'd love to do that. So it was really amazing. We um, had our last LA show at the Roxy, and the next day, we went to the YouTube studios and they filmed us like in our van and we did some interview stuff and um, throughout the whole day they they interviewed us and just basically had us on camera for everything and then we did a sound check and then during our sound check Belinda Carlisle just kind of came out into the uh, stage and we all this is all at the out YouTube studios mm -hmm. yeah all at the YouTube studios in the middle of sound and they check had, like a, a mock-up of CBGB's in the YouTube series, really? so it, it was just really like They had a video. set, mm -hmm, it was really yeah. looked like the original And what great guys there, their whole crew, very I mean, sweet. Yeah. very sweet, very accommodating, like we loved them yeah. so much, they were very, very sweet, Yeah. because um, we had a really great experience there, and of course we were just, you know, so excited that it was her, and um, she's like, how do you guys feel about doing one of, uh, one of, one of my songs, we're like, Okay, we'd By love way, to. Have 15 minutes to learn it. <laughs> yeah, basically, I mean, we didn't have a lot of time, and so then we had like some of our fans came out for for the show, and they and they it broadcasted live, I think, on YouTube, and um, we played our full set, you know, about, about 30 minute set, and then we encored with we got the beats, and then wow. Belinda May of jumped on stage with us and sang with us. That's incredible. So, that was well, really like I say, cool. having been there when Belinda started. Of course, our CBGBs, it was called The Mass. That's where all the girls in the Go-Go's used to go hang out. Okay. Out of Hollywood Boulevard. That was the punk club downstairs, <laughs> like in a basement of a really ratty building. But that's where punk rock started here, and they were all in it. And, yeah. you know, it's it was great to see what they did. And to all these years later, to see Belinda come down and bless you guys and... It was really Pass cool. Pass the torch. She's very cool. Well, and just to get, you know, just to be around someone that, that really knows, like, the ins and outs and just, like, the... It's tough being in a She's band. a survivor. Yeah, you know, especially back in the day, like, coming up, doing an all-girl thing at the time, which we were, you know what I mean? And it's just, like, um, it was a really cool moment for us, you know, to just to be around. We've done some stuff with the Bengals, too. We love them. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, with Heart, we also know them. And it's, mm. you know, it was it was really cool, you know, to get some feedback and to just kind of um, talk with her a little bit about some of her experiences and just, you know, we got it and she got it, you know. It was cool. Well, you not only learn from what went right, but you can learn from what went wrong. So hopefully you oh, can absolutely. avoid some of the... The pitfalls. Yeah. You know, tell, tell us the advice she gave you as far as the party. You know, out of everything, she she said she really dug what we were doing. She's like, I love the sound. I love the harmonies. I mean, you guys are great. Bisha's great. You guys are all sound great. Her only, um, you know, piece of advice was, you know, lay off the partying. You know, stay away from that. I mean, it sounds like, I mean, I think they had a lot of issues. You know, a lot of bands do. I mean, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, you know. Yeah. But it's, um, it can really. Well, especially back then. The, yeah. You know. They you really didn't know too much because the rock stars right. in the 70s seemed like they were some fantasy world. They couldn't right. relate to all that. So that was that was her advice, and I was like, thank you, I get that. It definitely broke up her band, no question. And they mm -hmm. certainly get back together for you know reunion shows, but they're not close. They're not right. a band anymore, really. Yeah. And I get, I mean, I totally get that. 
I totally was get it that. the sex, the drugs, the rock and roll? Oh man, it was <laughs> it was all the above. But mm. there's no question that cocaine really killed the band because. Mm. Well, I guess Gina actually had a heroin habit, the drummer, and oh, okay. like Steven Adler of Guns N' Roses, if you can't you can't keep time on heroin, you know, you're in a different no. world. So it was very difficult to get them all back in the room, and the cocaine was flowing from the '70s into the early '80s, you know, when they were launching. So yeah. um, yeah. you need a little pick me up, and then you need to get you know ready for the interview. It just became you know a habit, and then. Yeah, yeah. It accentuates the arguments. It's not just, well, hey, you used my whatever. It became, you know, more violent and more... Well, you become something that you're essentially not. Yeah, you're point. holding grudges and yeah. spiraling out of control. And scoring the drugs becomes more important than the gig, you know. And the fans don't thing, care about you know, that. To be honest, like, I, I'm, I'm a sober person. Yeah. And I got sober before I started playing music like in, in bands and it's such an interesting experience because I've met a lot of musicians on the road that are sober yeah um and a lot of people get sober you know after so much craziness on the road and it's like for me it all happened a lot when I was younger so it's interesting to hear the stories about people that um you know got sober on the road I just feel like that would be so difficult like I'm so grateful that it's been very diff it's been really hard to try to live you know sober and be in a band but it's I can't imagine you know going through that period like I did when I was younger being in the bands. I mean, it's Well, you're in a lot so of bars, hard. there's a lot of alcohol, a lot of festival, a lot of, yeah. a lot of that around because mm -hmm. people coming to see you, they don't have to travel to the next show. Yeah. Right. They don't have to, you know, be coherent for the morning interview and all that, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to them, it's a celebration, they're out partying and a lot yeah, of that can spill onto the stage. Go yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and I think in the beginning when you're younger, maybe that could be the case, but I just feel like this day and age and especially where we're at it's just so important that we have uh we have our shit together you know what i mean when we're here for the interviews when people are taking time to do this for us like we need to be present and be okay it's just so important to like have that understanding of the business side of things now as much as being able to perform you know well you're like athletes in a sense and yeah. you got to get up you got to pace yourself and you got to cross the finish line, and then you got to get up tomorrow and do it again. So and it's hard. It's yeah, so hard. It's you got to pace life. yourself. And so it's I can't physically imagine trying demanding. to do this and being hungover every day. I no. cannot imagine doing that. I don't know how people do that. Just like, <laughs> 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 you know, just yeah. Well, well that, a lot of people do do it. You know, well, that's the vicious them, cycle but. again. You take this drug to get up, and then you got to take that drug to go to mm -hmm. sleep, and then this that's drug to get up. Like, yeah. Yeah, that that simple little. Snort or puff and yeah. pill turns into like I need it. I need it every day, you mm -hmm. know. And you know we've seen the toll it's taken. But these days, all all the bands we talk to that are out there touring and working hard, in a sense, it is. It's like you're campaigning for public office. You're you're an athlete in training for the championship. You've got to maintain the pace and be clear headed. You know, a lot of people were under the misconception. Well, you know, Jimi Hendrix and the Doors were they wrote they wrote their songs when they were all smacked out. So we got to do that too. Mm -hmm. And then they realized that wait, those guys died like in yeah. their twenties. You know what I you mean? Know? Like literally di died. They died. They died. And they twenty-seven have to, years old. Yeah. I f there's. I mean, I have I've worked with musicians that feel like they write better when they're under the influence, and maybe some people do. I don't know. I guess I've. I, guess I write better it. under the influence of love. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Love's the most powerful drug. Who knows what the right answer is, but I feel like, um, I, I just feel like it's important. I mean, you have so much to lose if you really want this. You have so much to lose by just getting a nice... Well, it definitely lessens your odds of, of making it if you can't maintain... Unless you are that ...show good. after show. You know. But again, you, you, you know, you might be, but every band member or everybody on the team might be at a different level, so... Exactly. You know. You might be able to fake it or, mm -hmm. you know, fudge it for a little bit, but it, uh, it definitely catches up. Yeah, so, now great. talk about the, the creative process, writing the songs. Um, someone come in with an idea, you hammer them into kind of a band Basically shape? Basically like that, yeah, someone will come in with an idea, and then we go from there and structure it. I usually, I'm the one that whips out the melodies and lyrics, mm -hmm. but I'll write on top of whatever the girls throw at me, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, she's got. Yeah, in the past, you know, uh, Miss Jessie Farmer and Abisha wrote a lot of the, the first record and maybe first EPs. I think um, 
mainly those two, and then, um, you know, when Jamie, Jamie Holm was here, she wrote, she, she did a lot of writing. I do a lot of writing, too. Um, she, yeah, she helped out with, like, a lyric or two. Yeah, we all kind of, you know, we all write a lot, and, and I have a different style, but, but we've been able to bring, every time there's been somebody new in the band, we've been able to bring in, like, a new element, a new writing style, which is always really fun, and, um, you know, but we all write and we share our, our, our music. And if it's something that may, maybe could be a Sick Sarah song, then we'll start jamming on it. And We're excited to work with, uh, mm -hmm. with the, the new members. We've got Ari, who's an amazing writer. Mm -hmm. all, the, all the new people that we brought on for this tour all write. So yeah. We've, yeah. we've just kind of started listening, you know, in the midst of the tour, some of the other songs. Because it was a very last minute thing getting these people involved. So really the focus was, you know, learning the songs mm -hmm. and being able to perform them on a, on a tour. So... Um, but we are definitely really excited to to record and um, hopefully bring in some new elements with the new people. But in the past, you know, there's been a lot of different... I mean, we all pitched in here and there. Well, really, you know, the, the song is the main thing. So it doesn't really matter who, in a sense, writes it or contributes to it as long as it's a great song. Yeah, you know, so true. outside writers, you know, co-writes... Yeah, this, like that is possible. You yeah, know. I mean, this last record, this last EP, Anthem, was the first time we ever brought on any songwriters. Okay. And uh, we met a few songwriters in Nashville, and it was a really cool experience for, I think, probably for all of us. Yeah. We've never I done anything it. like that before, and it was really, I learned so much, you know, just kind of just sitting back and just... People that have written hundreds of songs, yeah, just, they just do it all day. just shut up and, like, day. listen, just, like, watch them, observe what's going on, and it's like, okay. And they had ideas of, like... Because uh, I usually do a majority of like the, the writing and melodies and stuff, like they had ideas that I would have thought of. So I'm like, oh, that's really cool. You know, you know structuring, you know, different words to maybe avoid or, or you know what I mean? It was just, it was very interesting. Like, in utero is not a word that you want to put in a song. She tried to put it in the last song. She, she wanted the whole album to be called in utero and have a main song. You know, what do you do? song repeated yeah. in there at least mm -hmm. 50 times. You gotta try a lot of ideas to find out what works. So that one's not gonna work out. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Just, I'm so, okay. so when you're out there on the road, any special things you do to kind of pace yourself or, you know, maintain the energy, you uh, know, for the we, show? We we changed we we switched up our rider this this tour. We got vitamin C packets, vegetables, fruits. Um, the hotels that we've been staying at, they do have gyms. I will be honest, I haven't been doing much of it, but I know Jack and Ari have, which I'm very proud of you guys. Thank you. Um, I do the drink a lot of water, and, you know, I do my meditation books. Like, I have to, like, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress, especially this tour. There's so much going on. There's so much change that it's, it's so important to stay healthy. Like, you're not going to be of use to you the band or anybody else if you if you're not healthy you know so mentally mentally physically emotionally spiritually it's just important that we at least try to do that and trying to do that in a 12 passenger van when you're cooped up with a bunch of people you know driving overnight to get to the next show you're not really sleeping comfortably I mean it it's rough and so to try to incorporate time for that sometimes mm -hmm. you forget to and then it's like oh why do I feel like shit well I'm not taking care of myself so I'm um, trying to just like encourage everyone to you know, to do that. Sure. Now, is there any uh, pre-show ritual or anything you guys do to kind of get on the same page or before you hit the stage, anything you personally like, do or together? I do jumping jacks sometimes because I'm so tired. <laughs> I definitely Gets will just blood go flowing. out. I just get the blood flowing. I do, I warm up. I have a warm-up pad. I do warm-ups. Um, and then, you know, the last few shows we've had people come back um, maybe 15 minutes prior to the show and we'll just do a little powwow. How's everybody feeling? You know, give a little back rubs, give a little pep talks. I'm like, we're excited. So sometimes that helps just to get everybody together so we can be like, how's everybody feeling? Go over any, you know, notes or whatever. That's what we have so far. You know, it's a pretty much a new lineup, so. Yeah. And, and talk about the new EP, Anthem. Is there any songs in particular there's an interesting story about or anything you're most proud of <laughs> achieving growth-wise with it? I am very proud of this record. Um, we went on a pretty long hiatus for a long time. We did the Vans Warped Tour, I think, in like 2012. And um, there was a lot that happened on that tour. And towards the end, you know, we just really weren't getting along. So we all kind of needed to take a quick break. And um, over those two years, you know, we would get together and have little one-off shows. And we wrote a lot of songs. We had, you know, at least probably 40 songs 
that we had to choose from. And um, at that time, we also broke away from our label, and we were just going through a lot of different changes. We, we tried out a new manager from Nashville um, that didn't end up working out. And, you know, going through our contracts and just getting lawyers involved and trying to part ways and try to kind of have a fresh start is, um, is what we collectively agreed that we wanted to do at that time. And so we had to raise all the money to get the record and to get the record printed and then to find a new booking agent that would, you know, get us a tour. And so um, I felt like we had a lot more ownership in making that happen. And I mean, we all worked together to, you know, raise money. And um, so I'm proud of what we did because we did it ourselves, you know, mm. and I think that that um, says a lot. And as far as like picking those songs, um, that was really difficult for, for a lot of us because, you know, we all had our, our own songs, but we really picked the songs that we thought that our fans would really love and that really would, you know, stay true to them and what they love about Sick of Sarah. And then also some that meant something to us. I would say, um, um, I mean, as far as the songs themselves go, I mean, Stereo has a lot of you want to talk about any of the songs that, like, sure. lyrics and uh, stuff? Yeah, Stereo is about, you know, it's kind of like during the difficult situation with all that stuff and having to deal with all the pressure, those are like the lyrics. Um, I mean, I could say them, but if you listen to Stereo, you can, you'll understand. <laughs> back up, back up and breathe. It takes a little more purpose and clarity. I'm just a little bored. Call it my therapy. I need a little more Stereo. You know, mm. kind of like we want to keep going. Yeah, like wash block of people out. You know, like right. There were so many people telling us to do so many this different thing, things. Like, thing. who do we believe? Like, it was it was really, it was so hard to like. It, it's been so hard, <laughs> the last two or three years, um, because it's just we've had a lot of terrible luck. We've made some bad decisions. You know what I mean? We were just growing. We're growing up. We. We want to understand more about the industry, and I think for a long time we didn't really know, we didn't ask questions, and so now we're at a point where we want to have more ownership, we want to understand like what's going on, and as we were learning, we were getting a lot of pushback on, you know, just, just show up and do your thing like we're handling it, and we're like, well, no, we want to know, and so it was um, a weird transition for us, and um, yeah, I don't know, yeah, if that makes sense. Well, it's so important to know as much as you can about everything you're doing without letting it dilute what you do best, which is songwriting and the playing and, you know, the performing. Well, but to the be naive thing. is where the industry used to keep the artists. They wanted them dumb and just playing the music. And we saw a lot of pitfalls with that. So mm -hmm. a lot more of the artists are more independent, more in control of their own destiny. So you want that. So, you know, learn what publishing and recoupment and, and we have. all mean, this stuff we've, is. And we've, we've released the record on our own and we, you know, we just, I mean, Google has been my best friend, you know, look it up, figure it out. I don't know how to do this, so I'm just going to figure it out. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, what did we do before the internet and cell phones? I don't know, encyclopedias. <laughs> Who the hell is Libraries. this Google dude we're talking Who is about? this Google? <laughs> I know. I know, we, we tell these young people today, they used to break records and bands without the internet, without cell phones, without YouTube, and, and they're like, without computers. How, how I, would you even yeah. start? It's amazing. Yeah. And then getting around, being on tour without like the GPS and shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like having a, a road map. In the pay phones. Yeah, that's just, I mean, all of those bands, my hat is off to them. It just had to have been, I don't know. In a way, maybe easier, and in a way, di more difficult. You know, yeah. because now anybody can do it, so everyone's trying to do it. So now well, it's oversaturated. The, you know what yeah, I mean? There is so this, it's like I don't there's know. There's a lot of clutter out there. <clears throat> yeah. For sure. So now, obviously, the Warp Tour is very grueling, and it kind of stretched yeah. you guys to the nth degree with you know the camaraderie. You know, but what did you gain from that as far as building the character? Like, wow, we really. We got through this. Maybe we had to regroup or whatever, but it's a trial by fire. Some of the biggest bands in the world have gone through the Warp Tour. Well, I mean, as far as what the band gained, I mean, that's just such great exposure for any band that can get on the band's Warp Tour. I mean, it's, it's amazing. There's so many bands, so many genres now. It's not we just like the pop, punk, rock. Yeah. You know, we gained a ton of fans, yeah. And, yeah. and that was really great, and we made a lot of great connections with other bands, and, made, and like, you know, got to see a lot of other great bands that were up and coming, and that was really cool. Who, who, who was on the tour with you that year? 
Um, well, we did a couple of years. So one year, Paramore um, was on there. We were on there with... Uh, what's that one band? Oh, what? Shit. I can't think of it. It's not like LOL, but there's... 303? 303, yeah. 303 was on there. <laughs> LOL. Um, I mean, that, those were like the main stage people. There was a bunch of bands, man. Um, on our stage, like, who were some of our favorites? Uh, uh, Mighty Mongo was awesome. They're from Florida. Yeah. They were really fun. I liked Cherry Bomb a lot. Oh, Cherry Bomb, who are, they're now yeah. Hey Violet. That's right. Yeah, they're awesome. We were on our last Warp Tour. They, we were on the same stage, on the Kevin Says stage, and those girls rock. We love them so yeah. much. Yeah. And they're killing it. Um, yeah. So they were on there. Courage My Love. Courage My Love has been on there. There's a few. I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. There was a lot of great bands. But a lot of camaraderie, a lot of oh, yeah. learning, you know. A lot how to do of it, learning. how to pace yourself. Because, again, it's unlike cool clubs and backstage, it's all out there in the parking and lot. And for me, yeah, fields. that was really hard because, you know, I don't do any of that anymore. And so it, it was the most difficult tour <clears> for me. Tours, I guess we did it. Yeah, trying times. to get enough sleep, trying to get. Uh -huh. well, I face food. It. Well, the catering is mm -hmm. is nice, you know. Oh, they take. I mean, yeah. the crew, the 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 Warped Tour crew, very very amazing. Awesome. They're feeding a thousand the people three meals great. a day. Yep. No, they were all really sweet, but food a lot more great. partying. I mean, it's right in your face. You know, everywhere you go in that parking lot, it's lot right drinking. there. And so, yeah, that was um, and that was hard. But I mean, as far as like the you know us as a band after the tour, I mean, I think. I mean, we still went strong for at least a couple, two, three years after that, and so we did come together, and and we've done that several times. I mean, Sick of Sarah's been together since 2005, and I've been involved since, you know, what, two, 2009 or something. Okay. And um, so the band, I mean, for the main part, like, the founding members had all, like, been together a long time, and we, you know, even before I got there, they had been through a lot, and since I've been around, we've been through a lot, and I think that I'm really proud of what we did together, you know, mm -hmm. regardless of... How we ended things, some of us ended on good terms, some of us did not. But after the Warp Tour, I think after we took a little bit of time, you know, we always came, we would always come together and just figure it out and just be like, you know, we didn't really hold grudges too much, I don't think, after a period of time. Right. But then as things continued to happen after that tour, I mean, it just, it became obvious that it was time for people just to, you know, change is inevitable. And so we just, you know, we're embracing it. Yeah. They're not too happy with the guys being in the band, yeah. the old members, right. which is um, tough shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to have the best unit together yes, again. Absolutely. You got to put the starters out on the field, you know, and as Belinda Carlisle said, yeah, you to get rid of you know you can't be doing. Oh drugs yeah. And, you know, Go-Go's changed a few yeah. members. You know, they brought Kathy in on bass before they yeah. launched and. Had to make sure everybody was ready for the road, ready for the pressure, ready for right. the intensity, you know, the scrutiny, the the criticism, all that Some stuff. Some people aren't, aren't made for that. No, you know, no. Uh, I mean, sitting in your nice. room playing the guitar or the drums is a whole lot different that's, than being oh, out there yeah, being a competitive artist today. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what advice do you have to the younger bands, younger people that you meet that, that want to do this? I know you can't really school them so much on the business because that's constantly changing, but as far as the mindset or the dedication it takes, if what, what do you school do them it, on? If you want to do it, you know, just like just like with what Belinda said, like, you got to take it seriously. I mean, you can have some fun, obviously you can have fun, but you can't overdo it with the partying, you know, and if you're going to drink, you know, be wise about it. If you're that stupid ass after the show that's drunk and falling all over the place, that's not cool. And if you fuck up a show because you're drunk and you forget all your lyrics or you mess up your guitar parts, you know, that's not good. What that could be somebody, all over YouTube today. Yeah, it could be all over YouTube. Mm -hmm. What if there's somebody there that was a potential, you know, scout? Yeah, and that's the other thing. You just never know who's going to be there. You never know who you're going to run into, you know, just loving everybody up. You know, make be friendly with everyone. Clean up your green room when you're done. You know what I mean? Just yeah. yeah. Be, be I think stay in contact, to the staff. network. Um, be respectful to the staff. Tip your bartenders. You know what I mean? Just being nice, courteous to people. Don't you, you want get people to, to remember you in a good way. Yeah. They want to anticipate you back rather than oh Don't no. Have an ego because issue. there's so much. More, I mean, it really is so much more than than you being an amazing musician or even an amazing songwriter. I mean, I think it. There's, there's a lot more that goes into it to really yeah. make an impact, you know? 
You've got to be an ambassador. Go. You got to be a diplomat. You got to be uh, all these things in a sense. And make sure you know? and try really try to get you know the the right team, the right team because you're only as strong as your weakest link. You know, yeah. I feel like um, it's it's important to have some like-minded people around. You know, so and it's hard. It's really hard. Very demanding. Physically, yeah. mentally, spiritually, all that. It, it really is. And especially when you do it for such a long time. And I mean, trying to make money and trying to make a living. I mean, it just doesn't come easy. I mean, we're still trudging, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, and it also, at the, at the same time, as long as you're doing what you love, and if it depends on where you want to go, have some goals. Like, what do you want out of your music career? Do you just want people to hear it? Do you want to get it in a movie? Do you want to, like, play in large arenas and open for a really great band? I mean, having some goals and uh, going out to shows, networking. But also being bands. realistic about the goals. Yeah. Not being disappointed because you're not doing an arena in the first yeah. year. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it takes a long time. Realistic goals are... Yeah, you got to temper that. You you got to be ambitious but realistic and savor each step along the way. Enjoy the journey, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and that's one of the things the last couple of years I've had a really hard time doing. To be honest, is like really just, you know, staying, staying in today, you know, and just like enjoying it while I have. Because sometimes I can forget. There's a lot of people that would love to do the stuff that mm -hmm. I'm doing. And right now with all the change, it's been so difficult. It's been hard to just stay, to be there and to stay positive and. Um, but I know that it's really important. So it's a good reminder for me too, you know. Well now as you wrap up this tour and go back home, what energy, what ideas do you have to go into the next batch of songs, the next recording? What do you what's on the horizon for the band? New songs, new material. Yeah. Once we get that in the pocket, you know, we're, we'll look to do sort of like a spring tour, maybe a summer tour. We really want to get some new songs out there. We really want to work on building our team. Um, you know, we just brought on some some new people that you know we feel really confident in. And so we got to we got to build our team back up. Essentially, this is a very transitional point. For I mean, we have Sarah. so much. I mean, it's just there's so much change that I really a lot want of recovery. to recovery. Sit down and like just you know really explore like what our options are and really explore like. What are the things that have worked for us the past 10 years? What are the things that have not worked for us the past 10 years? Try to get some, you know, feedback from some other people. And ultimately, it's up to us what we want to do. And, you know, I just, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I know that, like, we have a lot to write about. So I think we should do that. Yeah. You know, we want to write and uh, we'll have to figure out how we're going to record it and how we're going to afford to record it and then what we're going to do with it. But I think we want to plan it and make sure that, it, you know, everything is, is right. You know, well, it all starts with great songs. So it take really all does. that it really does. passion so. and anxiety mm -hmm. and angst and everything. Yeah, right. Put them in the song. Yeah, so I'm so. excited about that for sure. Great stuff. Well, thanks so much for coming out. Thank you, Thank you Jay. Jay. You're amazing. Where do we find you on the web? Ooh, sickasera.com. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, all at sickasera. That's sick of Sarah. Sarah with an H. Um, you can find us on iTunes, any, a lot of the other outlets, um, oh. Amazon, Google Play, if you Pandora. If you sick of Sarah, you'll find us. Yeah, we have a bunch H, of videos. We're going to do, I think, one big tour video. We usually do tour videos throughout the tour, but we've had so much other stuff going on, I haven't had enough time to do it, so I think I'm going to, we're going to do like a, yeah. kind of like a, a Plus, tour labels movie. project movie after the tour, so that'll <laughs> be on YouTube. Movie. We have a bunch of our videos. We just released a video for Rooftops. Actually, Mark Morgan was our producer here from Mark LA. Mark Morgan, I love him. Wow. And we love him. And so that was released just a few months ago, and that's on YouTube. So we have a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Um, a bunch of stuff on YouTube. And then there's some other videos that aren't on Never mind. What? Nothing. I don't um, know. I don't know what's happening. That one video that was leaked. Oh, the inappropriate one that you... Yeah. Anyway, okay. so we have the <laughs> rooftops videos online. You can check it out on YouTube. Um, it's amazing. And um, that's just what I think, my opinion. So uh, <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Well, we'll pretty spread good. the word. Can't wait Are to you, see you on the road. It, Come Jay? on back. I have. You did. Yeah, and you did your I research. I love it. I did I my research. research. Mm -hmm. We support the bands. We can't wait to see you guys come yeah, back through. Keep awesome. on rocking. Thanks, Thank and make you. sure you check out that we're gonna that um, that show's gonna be aired on January first. Breaking Bands on Access. Can't TV. wait to see it. Yeah, our so old girl Belinda, Belinda still kicking. Belinda. Yeah, it'll be fun. 
There's just, a lot of great bands on there with a lot of really cool celebrity like mentors. We love Access awesome. TV. It's awesome channel. Yeah, yeah, My favorite. It's very cool. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. I'm glad. The new so January 1st. All right, guys. just so the viewers out there know, Jay is currently not wearing any pants. <laughs> well, next question. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. See you Thank next you. time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. Petless Jay.